The hallmark of a truly skilled architect or designer is the ability to create exciting new spaces or to radically transform existing spaces for the better. Some spaces are tangible, for example, buildings. You can touch these spaces with your hands. You can experience these spaces with your five senses. Other spaces aren't as tangible, but they're just as real. These are ideological spaces like institutions, cultures, ideas. Long before Wally Carradine began reimagining and crafting the tangible built space, he was reimagining and reshaping ideological spaces. Wally Carradine was the first African-American graduate of the University of Arkansas's School of Architecture. This accomplishment, achieved in spite of all odds, began Wally Carradine's illustrious career of reshaping spaces, all kinds of spaces, for the better. Wally uh, Carradine uh, was born in West Memphis and came to Fayetteville to attend the then School of Architecture. This was in the 1970s. Um, he, in fact, is the first African-American graduate of what is now the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design, the first graduate in architecture. And um, having graduated, uh, returned back to central Arkansas and over a lifetime and career, built uh, any number of significant structures. Well, I had a particular passion for working for communities where he knew there were few professionals of difference who could relate fully, deeply, and naturally to the needs of diverse and underrepresented communities. He was very concerned about establishing African Americans as rely that, that reputation as being reliable, able to do the work. I don't know if he was looking to be a star architect. I don't think his ego was going in that direction. It really was a service-minded thing of, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this well, I'm going to break the stereotypes, I'm going to, you know, get rid of these negative associations that are, that, you know, I'm going to prove that the African Americans can do this. What separates the excellent architect from the good architect is the ability to achieve function and beauty and quality in a building while also understanding and fulfilling the desires of the clients and the community that that building will serve. When Wally graduated and with his degree in architecture, he also became a contractor. So the building I worked with, uh, with Wally in that building, Wally actually was the contractor that built that building to be part of the largest black architecture firm at the time in the Urban League building that Wally had actually built and was actually part owner of now uh, was, was pretty neat. Knowing that somebody that looked somewhat like you does something important causes you to have more confidence. He has left a legacy, certainly in terms of the example he provides for all of us, certainly for our students and our African-American students as to uh, opportunity, accessibility, uh, and ultimately, uh, I would say, courage. And um, we have determined uh, to honor him by naming the East Portal of Vol Walker Hall uh, in his honor. And when it comes to diversity, whether you are African American, Caucasian, or Asian, I think there's a, 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 a language that we have to have. We don't, I think we take diversity for granted when we don't realize the positive impacts and the different perspectives that having a diverse environment, um, what it allows creatively. One thing I appreciate about my perspective is that I'm exposed to another culture's um, expressions of beauty in, in a very intimate way and, in, and with, with a large quantity of access. So um, in school, I went to an HBCU, which is a historically black college or university, that's what HBCU stands for. I went to Tuskegee and I was exposed, thankfully, there to a lot of African-American design. But in general, our industry highlights um, work from Europe and work from mostly um, white designers, which is equally, you know, it's just as beautiful as all other architecture. So I think just 
understanding that aesthetic and then applying my own aesthetic, I create something interesting. And I, I like doing that and I like the, I think that as firms diversify and as they in, in, increase in different perspectives, architecture is going to be elevated. 25, 26 years ago to today, I've seen a big change. I see, I see more women in architecture, uh, period, of all colors, all nationalities. I see more women. Uh, I see minority. It was important for me is to understand different cultures in terms of my being diverse, understanding what different cultures need, understanding how different cultures, uh, how they approach things, what are their likes, what are their dislikes. This has been a priority of mine since I arrived, was to not only build overall scholarships for uh, students in the school, but to build scholarships in very particular areas, specifically for students who are from Arkansas, students who are first generation to come to the university and to the school, and then even more specifically, students who are uh, residing in um, a whole range of counties across Arkansas, from which, to be honest, we haven't been receiving many applications or enrolling many students. Me and a couple of other people in our firms are coordinating a new mentor program called Building Momentum. Um, and the whole idea is to get high school kids and junior high school kids that are in regions of Arkansas that aren't exposed to design and aren't exposed to what architecture and interior designers do and exposing them to that and creating an outlet for them to come to us for resources, whether it be um, advice on taking tests, advice on getting scholarships, things that aren't necessarily tied to our profession, but are the most difficult things for a student that's wanting to get into our profession. This school is open to you all. This school is accessible to you all. This school will support you when you're here, and it will support you as you graduate and move forward into your careers, wherever they may lead you. We have work to do, as I've said, in uh, enrolling an ever more diverse student body. We have work to do in recruiting and appointing an ever more diverse faculty. And we are working on it. It's fair to say that anything we do at this point will surely, surely be visible but it will also be insufficient. That is the work we have to do. The most difficult thing about having a diverse school environment is getting everyone to get along, um, to accept uh, and allow space for other people's ways of thinking. Uh, maybe not necessarily understanding, you might not be able to get understanding, but at least accepting it. Um, and moving forward uh, and working with the person, whether they disagree with you or agree with you. And I think that's important because um, as we move forward and we really look towards having diversity in design and uh, design for social cause and for social betterment, we're going to have to work with communities that aren't like our own. And I think we should practice that in school. The Faye Jones School prepared me just by being a place uh, that was available and open for me. Like, as an international student, as a person of color, uh, I was able to meet so many different people and go to so many different places that just opening up my worldview and being able to connect with people that didn't look and think like me uh, was already sort of the inception of understanding how impactful diversity could be. I had to really grapple with my identity as a black man, as a black man in Arkansas, as a black man studying architecture at the University of Arkansas. Um, and I really struggled with it with some professors, but some other professors really encouraged me to be myself and go after whatever I, whatever I wanted to, whatever I thought was important. To help improve the climate for diverse designers, particularly in my office, I have these table talks where I bring together different intersectional groups in the office where we could begin to have discussions about the things that matter to us and how we think our role and our identity impacts design. For example, last week I gathered together the women in the office and we had a Women's History Month table talk where we expressed kind of what our role is as women, challenges, how we could begin to uplift each other. Uh, we shared a lot of good tips, a lot of painful stories, and a lot of good memories. 
One thing that I would like to tell current students of the Faye Jones School and future students of the Faye Jones School, specifically uh, minority students or students who feel like there isn't necessarily a path post uh, graduation, uh, just to stick with it um, and keep going. Uh, at the end of my second year, at the end of my third year, at the end of my fourth year, I wanted to teach. I knew I wanted to be a professor in some way, shape or form, but I couldn't necessarily see the pathway to that. Um, and with the encouragement of my professors here um, and with uh, mentors that I found outside of the school, they encouraged me to go after what I wanted. And I didn't think I could get into the GSD, um, but I took the first step. I applied, I gave it my best, and you know, I'm reaping the benefits, um, so stick to it. <laughs>The Nomas Club is a club that is specifically oriented around minority students for us to be able to support each other um, through uh, design education. There are um, conferences that we can attend where we're able to network with uh, minority architectural professionals um, and go throughout the country and get to meet new people, uh, get exposed to new places, new ideas, um, and it is sponsored by the Faye Jones School. Uh, in the past, NOMAS has organized events, meetings, um, and invited educators and professionals to come speak to us and sort of connect our students to professionals in order to pr promote the place of minorities in our practice. The experiences I had in NOMAS really opened my eyes to what was beyond my undergraduate experience. Um, not having much representation within my undergrad uh, experience really, it made me want to see what else was out there. So putting myself out there as a leader um, and seeing what came from that really helped me to um, gain exposure to conferences. I didn't know that there were national conferences and when I went to that I didn't know that there were so many other professionals out there doing what I came to school to do. NOMA has lots of initiatives and lots of resources to help students that are seeking licensure and opportunities. They have a foundation fellowship that they recently announced that places up to 20 students in very large firms all across the country. So they do their best to promote diversity and to partner with firms in order to rep have minorities represented in the field. At the Faye Jones School, NOMAS seeks to create a community in a profession where there isn't very much minority representation. And we, here we can continue to advocate for our representation in, as students, educators, and practitioners in our fields. NOMAS is a great support system for diverse designers. Creating this diverse setting where there's representation, everyone's included, people from different backgrounds, that's important. But also important in creating these spaces is this ability to collaborate, to come around the table together for open sharing of ideas and working together. Having all these voices at the table is what makes a good design a great design.